Squarespace in general is a pretty user-friendly platform, but if you've never played around in Squarespace, you probably don't know where things live or about the settings and things like that. So in this video, I'm going to dive in to the Squarespace dashboard. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, I'm Mariah from MariahMagazine.com. And on this channel, I dive into helpful videos and tutorials for SEO, websites, and tools to help you grow your online business in a way that works for you. So in today's video, it's all about the Squarespace dashboard. So let's get into it. Okay, so the very first thing that we have to talk about is like, how do you even log into the dashboard? So you can go to squarespace.com and then click the login button right up here in the top right hand corner, enter in your login credentials and then click log in. Then you'll be taken to your dashboard. You might only have one website here. You might have a bunch of websites. Okay, so I am going to click on the website that we're going to walk through in this overview. And then once you click into the website, basically you'll see this left hand menu. This is like your overall navigation menu for like getting to things on the website. Okay, so the top thing that we have is pages. So this is where all of the pages on your website live. The other thing is design. So this is the design elements on your website. So like your fonts, your colors and things like that. Everything else is kind of a little self explanatory. So we're just going to dive into it. So when you click on pages, Pages. These right here are the pages that are in your main navigation menu. Okay, so these are the things that show up right here, but you can always drag and drop them and you can move things into the not linked category. So when you move them from main navigation to not linked, it doesn't mean that the page gets deleted from your website. It just means it's no longer accessible from the main navigation menu up here. So I'm actually gonna put this back. There you go. So basically you can click on these pages here and your page will pop up on the right hand side. If you wanted to edit content on the page itself, you would click edit and then the editor pops up and then you can click on what you wanna edit and you'll see if it's a paragraph or like content, then this toolbar will show up here, kind of similar to like Microsoft Word, okay? And then if you want to edit an image, you can click on it and click this little pencil icon and you'll be able to edit the image. You can delete it, replace it, kind of do whatever you want to. You can also edit the design aspect of it. So I have this one looking like a shape but you can kind of mess around with it and like as you're making changes you can see the changes happen in real time on here okay so we're just going to scroll down and it's kind of the same thing for like every other aspect of the website here like I'm not going to go through like how to build a website but that's essentially how you edit the super basic things on a page so when you're done you're going to hover over done and you can either save or discard changes if you were messing around with something on this page and you don't like the way that it looked then do not click save because as of right now there's no way to like get an old version of that page back okay so don't save it unless you like how everything's looking up here. Oh, and the other thing that I wanted to mention is if you want to edit the mobile view of a page, you click this mobile view icon right there, and then you'll be able to see how the page looks on a mobile device. Okay, so we're going to head back over to desktop. I'm going to discard changes because I don't want anything to change. And then these little plus icons, this is how we add a new page to the website. So if you're creating a page and you don't want it to live in this main navigation menu right away, then click under not linked and go ahead and add a page that way. Okay, so shop or Shopify, <laughs> Squarespace gives you these different options to be able to add a blank page, page layouts. There's a scheduling functionality where it's like people can book appointments or classes with you and then a blog. So if you want to start a blog, let's just say that we do just so you can kind of see how this looks. So I'll click blog and then you can see how you want it to look. We kind of just want this basic one. You can give it a name. Blog something. Okay, so once you give it a name and it loads here, these are all the single blog posts. 
Okay, so these are essentially like the single blog post. You would create a new blog post when you want to like talk about a new topic. Okay, so we can either check these and just straight up delete them so that we don't have anything happening right here and we can add a new blog post by clicking this plus icon and we can enter the blog post title so blog post number one and then we can start typing out our blog content here so however you want to do it and notice that the editor looks really similar to when we're editing a page okay so the other thing is you can click this plus icon here and then you can add an image a gallery a form all of this fun stuff so same thing when you're done you want to click save or publish or discard changes. If you don't like how it looked, discard changes. If you save it without publishing, that means everything that you created is saved on the back end, but the front end people, like visitors to your website, they're not gonna be able to see this, okay? So we're just gonna click save. So you could see that here. If you want to change this, this is the thumbnail. So click on these three dots here and click settings and this is where you can choose a featured image or like the thumbnail right here you can upload an image there the other things you have some options for adding tags adding categories you can allow people to comment on your blog post or you can not allow them to comment on your blog post totally up to you and then you have your seo settings right here okay you can also add a social image yada 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 you can play with all of that so the thing is we're gonna head back to pages here Notice that the blog is still under not linked. The only way to get people to see that you have a blog and put it up here in the main navigation, you got to drag it up there, okay? Because otherwise people aren't going to know that you have a blog, okay? So that is kind of just a really rough overview of the pages section. The other thing that I wanted to mention here is that if you wanted to add a link to a page or an external website, you can also do that. Like if you wanted to have... Here, I'll just show you. Like if we just wanted to write out Facebook and then pop the Facebook link like to our Facebook profile, pop it in there, you can do that too. But if you're gonna link to an external website, make sure that you, web address, make sure that it opens in a new tab. So when users click on it, they're not being taken away from your website. Instead, that new link opens in a new tab, okay? That's just for like user experience and for SEO. So we're gonna close that stuff, close that, discard, head back to the main menu. So design, this is essentially where all of your website styles live. So your browser icon is this cute little image right there. And then you can edit the lock screen, checkout page, 404 page, all of that fun stuff. Here's a space where you can add custom CSS if you're familiar and comfortable with that stuff. Okay, so in the site styles, this is kind of how we change the fonts, the colors, and how the front end stuff looks on our website. I'm not going to dive too deep into that. We're going to close that out and exit edit mode. So I'm going to head out of here. I actually just want to be looking at the home page again. Okay, so the other way to edit a page is you can click on it in the right hand side here. So like I can click on any of these pages and then I can click this edit button in the top left hand corner and it's going to be like the same exact thing. So there's two ways to kind of edit a page or edit a blog post. I'm interrupting this video really quick because I created something super awesome and I want to share it with you. So if you need help planning out your SEO keywords for your blog posts, for your product pages, for your homepage, for any page on your website, then definitely check out my SEO keyword planner. It's a five page editable workbook created in Google Sheets that will help you brainstorm, organize data, and strategize your keywords accordingly. I include tips, best practices, and examples to help you get started. Click the link in the video description below to check it out. The commerce button is if you're selling things on your website, okay? So on this website, we don't have any products that we're selling, no physical products, no digital products, but essentially these are all of the settings and information for that stuff specifically. 
And then if we head over here to marketing, so we have email campaigns. So if you are using Squarespace to send an email newsletter or anything like that, then you can click on email campaigns here. We have profiles, which is like your customer profiles. So like an email subscriber, they would be considered like a separate profile. Or if somebody bought something from your website, they will have a separate profile. And they're kind of, I'll just show you organized by what they are. Okay, so then we're gonna head back here. Oh, we're gonna head back into marketing. And then you can see SEO. So this is where you can edit the SEO title and the meta description for your homepage. This is very important. I'm an SEO strategist, so I really focus on this stuff. But if you guys want an overview of like adding SEO titles and meta descriptions to your Squarespace website, click the link in the video description below. I have a tutorial that walks you through the entire process. Okay, so I'm going to head out of here back into marketing. And then the promotional pop-up. So this is if you want like a pop-up thing like this on your website, you can go ahead and play around with that. If you'd like to add an announcement bar, so I'll just kind of show you what that looks like. It's like, if we wanted people to, I don't know, if we were selling something new, checklist, available, blah, 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 blah. You can go ahead and you can add this announcement bar to your website and you can have it click to a link. So it could click to a link of a product, a page, or a page on somebody else's website. So just launched a new Instagram, check out our Instagram. Just make sure that we're clicking the settings if it's a web address and opening that link in a new tab, okay? So we are going to cancel this because we don't want to enable an announcement bar. Head back and then you can play around with these things. There's Pinterest buttons. This is for Facebook and Instagram ads, Google ads, all of that stuff. And then scheduling. This is if you want people to be able to schedule like appointments or bookings with you, then you can play around with the settings in the scheduling tab here, which apparently it doesn't want to load. I'm just going to hit refresh. There we go. Oh, now it went away. Now it came back. Okay, so then I'm going to close this. And these are all of the settings that you can play around with if you want to mess with Squarespace scheduling. So we're going to head back here. Asset library. This is essentially like a media library of all of the images that live on your Squarespace website. This is actually new. Squarespace used to, you used to have to re-upload images like every time you needed to use them, but they did implement this asset library, which I think is great. So you can bulk upload images up here, but all of the images that live on your website live in this asset library. Head back to home. If you take donations, you have that information there. Analytics is essentially like your data for your website, okay? So if you have an e-commerce shop, you can see your sales information. If you wanna check out your website traffic data, this is really good. And then just because I'm an SEO strategist, I would suggest clicking on search keywords and connecting this website to Google Search Console if you haven't already. So I do have a video that walks you through that entire process. I will also link that video in the video description below. So this is kind of just like a really fun rabbit hole to get yourself into. But once you have Google Search Console connected to this, you'll be able to scroll down and see what keywords you're showing up on Google for. So you'll be able to see the clicks, the impressions, your click-through rate, and the average position that you're in in Google Search, okay? So we're gonna head back to home. Couple more things here. So profiles. If we click on that, that's kind of the profiles that we talked about before. And then settings. This is where a lot of the settings for your actual website lives. So if you wanted to make your website private, you would click site availability and go ahead and change it to private or you can password protect it. Let's head back to settings here. Member areas, if you have a membership, language and region, business information, social links. This is something that you definitely want to make sure is filled out because it makes adding the social icons on your website a lot easier, okay? So you can just add your social link here and then you'll be able to put it into the website wherever you want it without having to keep adding that social media profile over and over again. So let's head back to settings and then let's see permissions. That's essentially just like if you wanted to give somebody permission to access your website. So if you're working with 
a strategist, a website designer, a copywriter, an SEO strategist, and you want to give them access to your website, you would do that by giving them permissions here. This is a whole lot more safe than giving them admin access to your admin account, okay? Because when you're done working with them, you can remove them from having access to your website. So domains, the domains that you have connected to your website, they live here. Billing, this is pretty self-explanatory. Blogging settings, if you have a blog, check out those settings. And then advanced, so external API keys. This is if you have Google Analytics, you would pop in your Google Analytics tracking number here. If you needed to add some code to the header or footer of your website, you can do that by clicking code injection. And then URL mapping. So this is essentially setting up 301 redirects for your website. If you want to know how to do this, I also have a tutorial that walks you through setting up 301 redirects on your Squarespace website. So I will link to that in the video description below. So let's head out of here. And then I don't think I've ever really used any of this other stuff. You do want to make sure that your website has an SSL certificate, that just makes sure that it is secure. I'm pretty sure that Squarespace adds that for free, so just make sure that that is active. Okay, so let's head out of settings. One of the last things here is help. So the Squarespace Help Center, their support team is extremely helpful. If you're running into any issues, starting a chat with them online, I have solved a lot of client issues by just doing that. They are always really helpful. So you can visit the Help Center here. Also in this help section, this is where you can see the version of Squarespace that your website is using. So at the time of this recording, Squarespace recently kind of started really amplifying people moving from Squarespace 7 point zero to seven point one so we can see here that this squarespace version is seven point one so i'm going to head out of here and then if you click here it's essentially just like your account settings okay so in a nutshell i know that i went over everything pretty quickly but that is an overview of the squarespace dashboard so that's it for today's video. If you guys found this video helpful, give me a really quick thumbs up. And if you have any questions about Squarespace, how to do something, then definitely leave me a comment below so that I can create a video to help you out. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button, turn on bell notifications, and I will see you in the next video.